much time do I have before interest rates start significantly reducing my ConocoPhillips 401k value? And a additional part to that question is, do you predict that the retirement would be better if I was assuming uh, this year was a potential retirement day for me that next year might be better? And will interest rates continue to rise? I guess there's a couple of questions. There. Yeah, uh, let's see if I can remember all that and unpackage this a little bit. So the first question was, how long do I have until interest rates affect my 401k? But interest rates do affect financial markets. Uh, typically, when interest rates are going up, it has some short-term detriments to stocks, and it affects growth stocks a lot more than it affects value stocks. So there may be some implications on uh, interest rates on your 401k plan right now and going forward. However, the big impact is the specific uh, interest rate changes that affect your lump sum pension. So completely different relationship. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm here to say that this is already affecting both your lump sum and your 401k. Uh, lump sum, you, the only control you really have over that is leaving the company, which may or may not be feasible. But like we showed in that uh, table, interest rates for the second segment, corporate bond rate, which is the heaviest weighting, at least for that segment of the people who have a defined benefit pensions retirement, uh, they've gone up 1% in one quarter, which might have already reduced your pension payout by 10% or more if you're younger than 60. Uh, this is probably going to happen again, unfortunately, in the fourth quarter, but unfortunately, we will not know the exact detriment of this interest rate hike until late July, about a month out. Uh, they will publish the June interest rates. They haven't even published the uh, May interest rates yet, but they probably will later in the week or early next week. But the June interest rates are the fourth month prior to the quarter that you are leaving the company, which is June for the fourth quarter, folks. Uh, we won't know until July, and my guess is that they're going to be even higher than the third quarter, which means you have to leave the company by August 31st, commence your pension by September 1st, because your commencement date can only be the first of the month, and that would allow you to maintain the third quarter interest rates if you expected the fourth quarter interest rates to be higher and therefore your pension lump sum to be lower. So you can see there's a lot of moving parts here. Uh, we're paying close attention to this. I uh, encourage you to call us so we can go through the exercise of running several pension projections. And if you haven't done so yet, building that cash flow analysis so you can evaluate if you can even afford to leave the company or how you might be able to do so uh, based on your expenses, your current budget, and your resources. And uh, Patrick, do you mind the second part of that question? I completely forgot. What yeah, that's all right. So yeah, the, the second part of that, of course, is correlated, I guess, if you're assuming your values for things are going down, if someone's potentially considering retirement this year. And so the question is, do you predict that retirement will be better this time next year? And then if interest rates are affecting that, will they continue to rise? Those are the questions. Look, everybody's different on this. So again, it just goes back to running the cash flow analysis. However, let's talk about some of the dynamics of the economy and the interest rate environment that we're in today. Interest rates are going up in part because we've had some of the highest inflation numbers in 40 years. Uh, this is uh, a hope to curb or help to curb inflation. Unfortunately, this does several things. It hurts our lump sum pension values for the defined benefit folks, which is most employees that we talk to. Uh, it hurts your existing fixed income investments like your bonds in your portfolio. We've seen a uh, drop in value, uh, many of them not as bad as stocks. Uh, but it also hurts uh, stocks. It hurts growth stocks more than value stocks because growth stocks valuations are predicated on future cash flows as opposed to value stocks that are uh, more predicated on current cash flows. And the further out a expected cash flow is in the future, the more that we are discounting that cash flow in a higher interest rate environment. So that's why growth stocks have gotten beat up a lot more than value stocks and they continue to do so. So you definitely want to revisit your allocation, uh, we are encouraging our clients, almost all of our clients, to overweight value stocks as a result of uh, the interest rate and inflationary environment that we're in. Uh, but look at the, just the stock market, the broad market in general. The S&P 500 is down close to 21% in less than six months. Many stocks are a lot cheaper than they were uh, six months ago. Not ConocoPhillips stock, of course. You know That's appreciated, I think, more than 30% in just the last uh, five months. 
Uh, but it also could be a time if you have a lot of company stock to maybe start realizing some of those gains and shifting them to some of the other sectors of the economy that might be on sale right now. So look, everybody's different on this. We need to look at your overall situation, things like your risk tolerance, your time horizon to retirement, what might be different than the next person. Uh, but for somebody who is close to retirement, a lot of people are nervous and emotionally stressed out for, in retiring in an environment where stocks have gone down in price, when in reality, it's, it might be a better time to actually retire because A, you might be able to retire with more pension than you will be able to in six months, and B, you might be able to buy stocks and other investments, even bonds, cheaper than you could have six months ago and may be able to in six months. So all of these things we look at and everybody's different on the timing perspective, but it's just a good time to at least consider leaving the company right now for everybody who is at least close to retirement. For